Almost all the Conservative Party's money comes from private donors and lots of it comes from the super wealthy. Here at Open Democracy we revealed recently that the Conservative Party gets over £130 million from this tiny group of donors called the Leaders Group. So what do they get for their money? Well we don't actually know because when they have their meetings which are every quarter with the Prime Minister and his Cabinet Ministers we're not told what's discussed. We don't even know when they're meeting or who is going there. The Leaders Group is worth at least £50 billion that's 50 billion, just a small group. About 60 members of the leaders group feature in the Sunday Times rich list. That's the kind of list of the biggest and richest people in Britain. People like Sir Henry Keswick, who's worth over six billion pounds. People like Lord Stanley Vink, Paul Ruddock, super billionaire hedge fund people. And that's a real theme of the leaders group. A lot of these people are involved in hedge funds and in the city of London. They're people who make a lot of money and make a lot of money very quickly. We don't know what they're doing in our politics. We don't know what they're talking about with our politicians. And we have no transparency. What's really really kind of concerning in some ways is that when political parties are completely bankrolled by small groups that are interested in very niche areas, it makes questions about, well, could decisions be made that are not in the interests of the rest of the population, but in the interests of a small group of people? And I think that's a real concern when our politics is bankrolled by such a small number of super wealthy individuals. The reason people give money to political parties is to get close to politicians, to be able to talk to politicians, to talk to them about the things that interest them, to lobby politicians. It's striking that some some of the biggest donors in British politics, and particularly the biggest donors to the Conservative Party, are involved in oil and fossil fuels industries. People like Ian Taylor, who's the head of Vitol, which is the world's largest oil trading company. Ian Taylor's not the only one. There's people like the head of Petrofrac, which is another big oil company, which has been a major Tory donor. We've seen a lot of other people who are involved in fossil fuels, and very few actually are involved in renewables, giving money to the Conservative Party. There are people who's really trying to keep the industry as it is, and to make money off it as it stands. A number of the Conservative Party's biggest donors have been involved with what can only be called unsavoury regimes around the world. You know, a number of senior Tory donors have business interests in Bahrain, have worked with the Bahraini government. This is a government that has killed people who've protested in favour of human rights. And we know that the British government has lobbied the Bahraini government on behalf of some of its donors as well. One of the kind of most curious aspects of the leaders group is just how many people who give money to the Conservative Party have got honours. We discovered that almost a fifth of leading Conservative donors received knighthoods, peerages and other types of honours. You know, statistically, as one statistician told us, it's the same likelihood, the same person winning the lottery five times over. If people are getting honours from the political system that they're giving money to, that begs a lot of questions about cronyism, about using the systems that are supposed to be there to reward the very best citizens in the land. You know, people like Boris Johnson, they're you know, the people who are standing up against the establishment. But when you look at it, these guys really are the establishment. You know, Boris Johnson, you know, even outside of his background, if you look at the kind of donations, the amount of money that Boris Johnson pulls in, he's received over a million pounds of political donations in 12 months. That's an unprecedented sum, really, for an individual in modern British politics. If you look at the kind of world that these people are in, it's not the world of kind of ordinary voters. And their money doesn't come from ordinary voters. They talk about being men of the people. But actually, the money that bankrolls them comes from the super rich and the super wealthy. It doesn't come from the man in the street. You know, ahead of this general election, Boris Johnson said he wanted to raise around £30 million. This money is probably going into more and more disinformation than we've ever seen in politics before. You know, we've seen that throughout this campaign. We're seeing a lot of online groups spending money in strange ways. We've seen the Conservative Party rebrand its Twitter account as a fact-checking account, setting up a fake Labour manifesto website. This is what this money is funding at the moment. It's funding a kind of unprecedented amount of disinformation in our politics. And I think that's really concerning because we won't know how this money is spent until after the election. But we do know that huge amounts of money, millions are going into political funding from private individuals and they're buying things that we can't see at the moment and the idea is to try and sway the general election. The work that people like us at Open Democracy and Double Down News do is so important because it's trying to bring transparency and openness to this world that is run largely by very wealthy individuals who often don't want you to know what's happening. Do help and support as much as you can. Join the future of journalism. Join Double Down News on Patreon.